Hi everyone, I am Matthias Strober, Lead Product Manager at Soda. Today, I will walk you through the Soda Self Serve Data Quality Checks and Agreements that we have just announced in preview. At Soda, we try to bring everyone in a modern data team closer to the data so that they can find, analyze, and resolve data issues before these have any downstream impact on the business. Let me introduce you to the self serve data quality checks and agreements in Soda Cloud. Data quality needs to be made available to the people that really understand the data. It's no longer and never should have been the purview of engineers to understand data quality expectations. It's the business domain experts that need to have an active role in managing the data they used to meet the evolving needs of the business. Soda introduced the concept of an agreement in which data producers and data consumers can clearly articulate the quality expectations for data products as they are created and as they evolve as trusted sources of the truth. With the agreement workflow, users can easily define and set data quality expectations that stipulate the freshness, consistency and completeness of data products so that consumers can rely on the data they are working with and data product teams can get alerts about quality issues that they can quickly investigate and address. There is easy collaboration between data domain teams who can track agreements and ensure that data is and remains fit for purpose. Let me show you the Soda self serve data quality checks and agreements in action. During the demo, I will be playing a data product manager part of the sales department who is building an order analytics dashboard. I will be showing you how you can easily onboard your data into Soda Cloud and align with your data producers on your data quality expectations using the Soda agreements. As you can see on my screen, I'm currently logged into Soda Cloud. Before I can start writing any agreements to align on the data expectations I have on top of the data I'm using to build my order analytics dashboard, I need to make sure that the data I'm going to use is fully onboarded. Let me show you how you can do that easily. If you're logged into Soda Cloud as an admin, you will see this new option scans and data. If you go there, you will see that you can either onboard a new data source, define a new scan definition, or deploy a new agent. For the sake of the demo, I have already deployed the Soda agent. You can do that easily by following the instructions visible in Soda Cloud. If we go and start onboarding a new data source, we can go on uh, click on new data source. But for the sake of the demo, I have already onboarded the data source and I will walk you through how to do that. As the first step, you need to define a name for the given data source. So here we're calling it the retail Postgres data source. I need to define which agent to use. So I will use the agent that we have deployed earlier. And then I need to define a default schedule on when a given scan on top of this data source needs to run. So here we're saying it needs to run every morning at 5 a.m. In the next step, I need to fill in the connection details needed to connect to my data source. So here we are connecting to a Postgres database and for Postgres, I need to fill in the host, port name, username, password, and of course the database and schema to connect to. You can see that I can use environment variables to reference any credentials. So if you, for example, deploy the Soda agent on an AWS stack, you can use AWS Secret Manager to securely store all of your credentials and then uh, mention them or reference to them via environment variables from within the Soda Cloud environment. In the next step, you need to define when and which data sets you want to automatically discover. So you can do that via include or exclude rules. So in this case, I'm saying that I want to include any uh, data sets which are prefixed with a retail, and I want to exclude any data sets which are prefixed with test. What this functionality will do, it will go and look at the given schedule if any new tables or data sets have been added to your data source. And if they are included into the include exclude rules, they will be automatically onboarded into Soda Cloud. You can see that you can either use the default uh, scan schedule or actually the define uh, a new one. In the next step, you will need to do a similar configuration, but for profiling. Here you can easily define which tables and columns you, you want to profile. 
in most cases, n n not everyone wants to profile all of their tables in columns. So this is exactly what you can configure here. In the case of the demo, we are saying that we want to um, profile all of our tables and all of our columns. In the next step, you need to define which data set Soda needs to automatically monitor. And Soda will do that by looking at some key patterns in your data, which might lead to issues, such as, for example, the completeness of your data. So Soda will take a look at any anomalies within your row count evolution. But Soda will also monitor how consistent your data is over time by taking a look on how your schema is e evolving. This configuration can easily be configured using include and exclude rules. So here we're saying that we want to monitor all tables which are prefixed with retail and we want to exclude all tables which are prefixed with test. Now, this configuration is fully extendable using all of Soda CL's capability. So for example, we could say that we want to apply a default check on all of the data sets, um, which makes sure that the tables are not empty. And we can do that by using the for each construct where we say for each data set, um, we want to define a, a which data sets, of course. So we will say um, we want to do this on all data sets which are starting with retail. And for those data sets, we want to do certain checks. In this case, a very simple one where we say, okay, the row count needs to be bigger than zero. We can also give that a user a friendly name so that it is easy recognizable uh, within Soda Cloud. In the last step, you need to define ownership. First of all, you need to define a person who will own this data source and which will be the key person if anything goes wrong. And of course, we need the default data set owner to be defined so that we know who we need to alert uh, by, by, by default. If we go and click save here, the data source will be onboarded and then new scan will be triggered to automatically onboard all of the data sets. So if we navigate to the data set page and filter on the data source that we have just onboarded, you will see that three data sets have been onboarded retail customers, retail orders, and retail products. For any of those data sets, you will see a quick overview of the amount of rows, amount of columns, uh, 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 who is the owner, and when the data has last uh, arrived. If you go into any of those data sets, you will immediately see some key metrics, such as how good your check coverage is. So here you see uh, the, the green color, which means we have a very good test coverage. And we calculate that by benchmarking this against all of the other data sets available in your SODA organization. You can also see your uh, health score and how this has been evolving over time. And last, you can see an overview of all of your open instances of the last 12 weeks. Here you can see that all is green, which basically means all is good, but this overview will start going to yellow, orange, red, depending on how many incidents you have open and how long they are open for. If you scroll down, you will see an overview of all of the checks which have either been added by the automated monitoring functionality by Soda or which have been added by uh, other colleagues of mine. Now that we have successfully onboarded our data source, I can go and start creating a new agreement. And I can do so by going to the agreements page and clicking on new agreement. When I do this, I will enter a workflow which will support me in creating an agreement. In the first step, I need to select a data source and give my agreement a name. So in this case, I will be creating an agreement related to the order analytics dashboard I am building, and I will be using the retail Postgres data source that we have just onboarded. In the next step, I need to define all of the expectations I have on top of the data that I will be using to build my order analytics data set. The first data set I will be using is called retails orders. And on this data set, I want to make sure that I validate a few things. First of all, I can do this by using the Soda CL snippet. So here on the right side, you can find the most used uh, Soda CL capabilities, which you can easily insert uh, into your agreement. So the first check I want to do is make sure that I do a few checks on my schema. So first of all, I want to have a warning when anything uh, changes in the schema. 
but I also want to have a fail alert when, for example, a required column is missing. So I can say when required columns uh, missing, and then I need to define which column. So I find the order ID, pretty important, the customer ID, and the product ID, because a lot of logic is based upon that in my dashboard. I also want to get a fail alert when any uh, unexpected column type is there. So I can say when wrong column type for the order date column, I'm expecting a date, sorry, date. And for the ship date column, I'm also expecting a date. Now, the next check I want to do is make sure that there are no duplicate orders. So I can easily search for duplicates here insert it say okay and the duplicate count for the order id column needs to equal zero as before i can also give this a user-friendly name where we say okay not the duplicate orders next i want to make sure uh, that the shipping address is not missing so i can do this by uh, looking for missing here as well so here you see i have a missing check so I can insert this as well, where we say, okay, the missing count of the shipping address column needs to uh, equal zero. Here again, I will give it a user-friendly name saying that the shipping address should always be provided. Be provided. Next, I also want to make sure that uh, my payment methods are fully valid. So I can say invalid count for the column payment method needs to equal zero. Um, I can define the valid values here as a hard coded list, but I could also point to a reference data set if I will have that. So here I will say, okay, actually the um, accepted values are debit card. We also support PayPal and we also support cash. Here as well, I will give it a user-friendly name where we say all payment methods need to be valid. Next, I want to make sure that my referential integrity to my customer table is also fully verified. So here I will go and search for a reference test. So let me go to the snippets, find the reference test. And there we will say that the values in my customer ID column on my order table, they, would act, they must exist in another table called retail customers. And they're also the customer ID. So here I make sure that all of the customers uh, that are part of an order are actually real or existing customers from within my uh, official customer table. Again, we can give this a name where we say the customer ID needs to be valid. Last, I also want to make sure that my data is always up to date so I can verify the uh, freshness easily. We can do that by any um, timestamp column or based upon any timestamp column. So in this case, we will do that based upon the created ad column. And I want to make sure that my orders are not older than of one day. Now, last, I can also write some additional checks on another table that I will be using, which is the retails products table. And there I want to do some uh, invalid uh, check as well, where we say, OK, um, here I can do this. We insert this one and I want to make sure that I have less than 5% of invalid product categories. So I will use the product categories column. And instead of using a valid format, I will define my valid values myself. So I will say um, we actually support uh, computers. We also support uh, uh, storage products and then any accessories. Here again, I can give the user-friendly name so that uh, the rest of my colleagues can easily understand this uh, check. So now that I have written my agreement, you can see this button appearing here, which allows me to easily test my checks. So while I do this, so that I will translate all of those checks to a highly optimized SQL query. It will push that SQL query through the SODA agent towards your data source. It will execute it and get back the results. 
As you can see on my screen, the scan has been successful. I can see all of the checks that we have just uh, rewritten within the agreement. I can see a preview of its value and at the alert level. So we see that some of the checks have uh, will result in a critical alert. I can also go and review the log. So this is especially useful when uh, anything would be wrong. So we will clearly articulate that so you can easily uh, fix that. But in this case, I can close down this window as the scan has been successful and move on to the next step. In this step, I will identify all of the stakeholders. This step is mainly fully automated by Solda as we know who the data set owners are of the data sets that you have been using within your agreement. And we will automatically ask them to go and have a look at your agreement and make sure that they can uh, deliver the data in a st 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 state that you're expecting it to be. So in this case, it's my other user called data owner, which is actually the owner of the retail orders and retail products data set. And he will be asked to uh, approve my agreement. If you want to, you can easily add uh, ad additional people to also have a look at your agreement and give their opinion and either approve or re re reject. In the next step, you want to define who needs to be notified of any fa failure. So here you see that by default, all of the agreement stakeholders will be notified of failing alerts. Here in this case, we have also set up a default Slack channel. But here again, I can assign um, different people to also make sure that those are notified. So I can say that my colleague Jonas also wants to receive the uh, failing alerts. In the last step, I will select which scan definition and related schedule I want to use. So here you see that the default scan schedule that we have set for every morning at 5 a.m. will be used. If I would like my agreement to be validated at 10 a.m., I can also create a new scan definition here. In the last step, I can save my agreement and you will see that if I go to my agreement that it's currently pending approval for uh, the other user called data owner. So you can see that there are no checks validated yet because the agreement will only be validated once it's being approved. So if I quickly switch profiles to the other user and go to the agreement step, you will see that he has a new task to re 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 review an agreement. So this user will also be notified via email that there is a new agreement for him to look at. If you go to a given agreement, you can see that I can either approve or reject. I can go and look at the agreement in detail and verify that I can deliver the data in a state that uh, the data consumer is expecting it to be. So in this case, I can go and click approve. Uh, it looks good to me. So pr 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 providing this feedback is especially useful if you start uh, re rejecting an agreement because then you can easily start collaborating with your data consumers, make changes to the agreement, align on all of the data expectations or data quality expectations that, that you have, and then finally approve the agreement. Once you approve the agreement, you will see that the agreement changes to approved and that actually the agreement will be validated according to the schedule that have been set up. All of the checks will be validated and if any failures are being detected, the right people uh, will be notified these people to think go into um, sold out to do some quick analysis. And if there is a real issue, they can create an issue and keep track of that issue using sold out incident management capabilities. Thanks for watching this soda cloud product showcase. Here you can find a few follow up resources, such as our latest product release blocks, how you can easily sign up for a free trial of soda cloud, where you can find our open source library called Soda Core. And if you would have any additional questions, you can reach out on our Soda Slack community.